Welcome to the Val Studio for April 29th, 2017. I called up my friend Jerry here in town. He's an amp technician. I said, hey, Jerry, do you have any old tubes I can have? And he's like, yeah, I have a whole box. I went over there and I picked out a bunch of tubes, a bunch of variety of tubes, and we're going to dissect them today. I borrowed a 4K video camera from my friend Bill and I was able to capture some real high resolution imagery to show you the internals of these vacuum tubes that were probably manufactured 50 or 60 years ago. It's fascinating to me. I hope it's interesting to you. The, again, this is a five part video series. And so we're gonna go ahead and start with a rectifier tube, a 5R4. We're gonna move on to a 6L6. We're going to do two twin triodes, a 12AX7, you all know what that is, and an older version of an octal uh, a tw twin triode, which is a 6SN7, that's used in a lot of amplifiers as well. And we're going to end up with a 6AU6 at the end, which is a pentode. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you some first, uh, some imagery out of, that you probably have seen from RCA. These are very common images that, that are, are re reproduced in a lot of different tube documentation. We'll start with that and then we'll get right on in to doing the tube dissection. All right, thanks for watching and uh, let's go ahead and get started. There's a lot of information in the next five slides. If you'd like to look at it in more detail, go ahead and hit the pause. a little more crooked than the other one was. Awesome. Very good? Yeah. definitely a line there now and I still don't think we want to try to cut all the way through because I'd probably go I'm pushing pretty hard so I think we'd probably wind up going straight through it okay <clears throat> you want to give it a tap we'll see what happens sure
have to cut that one some more. Oh. Yep. Broke it off down there. That's fine. These are thick tubes. Yep. You just press this record button once, right? Okay. Yep. Didn't snap at all on our line. It's alright. Well, it broke one hole. <laughs> right on the line. I'm <laughs> gonna get a pair of pliers. Get those pieces off there. Most of the glass removed. Is that in frame? Down. All right, we're looking at a 5R4 from RCA. It's a full-way rectifier. And some interesting things here is a mounting position. You can mount this vertically or horizontal as long as you have the pins one and four in the vertical plane. We'll go ahead and talk about why that is in a minute. It's a four pin device. So you got two pins on the bottom that are for the, the heater slash cathode and then two anode pins at the top. I apologize for the fisheye lens. The macro lens on the camera was quite severe when you get about four or five inches out. It actually has five pins. One of them is no connect, pin number one. So as long as one and four and are in the vertical plane, you're good. The reason for that is once the filaments heat up, they kind of sag a, a bit. And you want them to sag such that they don't contact the plate. Tubes like this are all spot welded, welded together. This is the top side mica that kind of keeps things all registered. And these little whiskers here keep that mica in the center of the glass. You can see the filament down in there, which is also the cathode. It's on the spring-loaded thing that keeps it taut. You see down the bottom of the glass, there's some insulated conductors underneath there. Uh, this particular um, rectifier has a peak inverse plate voltage of about 2,800 volts. So we don't have any sparking on that side of it, so they put in extra insulation in there. Let's go ahead and trace the signal path here for the, the filament current. Okay, so it comes in on this pin, goes up here, comes back down, comes back around, goes up, comes back down and then makes its way back out onto an external pin and then these two here are the conductors that come back down and they're brought out to a pin as well the 
the plate itself is actually spot welded to a support member right here. Then it's folded over, brought back around. And then it's held together with these staples. There's also a, a feature that comes up through the top to hold the top mica down. So I'm going to try to pull those staples apart and unfold that from around the support member. Well, that was relatively unsuccessful. Those pins are very difficult to bend. And once they did bend, I couldn't get the thing to unfold. This is a quite stout piece of, I guess it's steel here. So I ended up cutting it and just pulling that whole plate side out. Kind of see here where I cut it. Let's go ahead and take a look at this filament slash cathode. This thing's a work of art, isn't it? Okay, well that was the 5R4. I uh, hope you learned something. I know that I did. Uh, stay tuned for the next video in this series. If you like this video, go ahead and hit like. And uh, thanks for watching. This is the Valve Studio.